Okay, good morning, everybody. Welcome. Take your Bible and join me in Ephesians chapter 4. You know, it's inspiring and even challenging to discover how God has designed the church so that believers are blessed and that the world is influenced with the good news. The church doesn't need programs or organizational flowcharts to flourish. What it needs are gifted people loving and serving one another. And that's what we have. The ascended and glorified head of the church, Jesus Christ, has bestowed gifts to help his people to continue to carry on his ministry in the church and in the world. You know, if there's anything that our world is characterized by, it's an emptiness that is consumed by entertainment and sometimes depression, even a sense of futility of, of life. But in the midst of this fallen world, God has been at work because he has given his church gifts so that when we serve one another and bless one another, we not only edify the body of believers, but we are a light to the rest of the world. In Matthew 16 and verse 18, Jesus Christ said, I will build my church, and he still is, but he's doing it through us. So in our passage of scripture this morning, we see that the Lord has uh, given gifts to the church to build it up, and we're going to begin reading in Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 11. And he himself gave some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, and some pastors and teachers for the equipping of the saints for the work of ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. In verse 11, we have the foundational gifts or support gifts or leadership gifts of apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. But it's not the job of these gifted individuals to do the work of the ministry all by themselves uh, while everybody else is just going along for the ride. It's the job of these gifted people to equip by means of teaching the word other believers so that all believers do the work of the ministry. In other words, the church thrives and lives and flourishes when you are involved in the building up of the body of Christ. Now, how do all these gifts help us uh, to grow in the faith and in love and in hope? Well, generally speaking, all of the gifts break down into uh, two aspects. There's speaking gifts and there are doing gifts. But first, before we look at these, first, every one of us must be willing to learn and grow by our own consumption of the Word of God on a daily basis. Let's look at 1 Peter, 1 Peter 2, and uh, verse 1. Therefore, laying aside all malice, all deceit, hypocrisy, envy, and all evil speaking, as newborn babes, Desire the pure milk of the word that you may grow thereby. So it is the responsibility of all of us to daily feed our heart and mind with the word of God. And uh, the apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers are there to help to encourage you to do that. Um, I want to show you how the apostle Paul used both words and works in his gift as an apostle to bless the church. So let's look at 1 Thessalonians. Let's go back to 1 Thessalonians chapter 2. And we're going to start in verse 10. 1 Thessalonians 2, 10. You are witnesses, and God also, how devoutly and justly and blamelessly we behaved ourselves among you who believe. As you know how we exhorted and comforted and charged every one of you, as a father does his own children, that you would walk worthy of God 
who calls you into his own kingdom and glory. For this reason, we also thank God without ceasing, because when you received the word of God which you heard from us, you welcomed it not as the word of men, but as it is in truth, the word of God, which also effectively works in you who believe. So it was the word of God and the character and actions of Paul and his companions to the Thessalonians that helped them to receive the word of God, believe it to be the word of God, and allow it to work in their lives. Then the Thessalonians then followed that example and they shared their gifts and they shared the word and they became then examples to others. Look at chapter 1, 1 Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 6. And you became followers of us and of the Lord, having received the word in much affliction with joy of the Holy Spirit, so that you became examples to all in Macedonia and Achaia who believe. For from you, the word of the Lord has sounded forth, not only in Macedonia and Achaia, but also in every place. Your faith toward God has gone out so that we do not need to say anything. Wow. Do you see that? The, the apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers, Paul and his companions, came into Thessalonica, laid the foundation, taught the believers in both word and deed, and then the believers themselves spread the word out. The believers did the work of ministry. That's how the church flourishes and grows. We have all these programs sometimes, and, and sometimes they're good, sometimes they're not, but there's too many, and we, we rely upon programs or organizations to do the work when all you really need are gifted people loving and serving one another. So what are the gifts? Let's go back to 1 Peter we're going to look at a couple sections of scripture this morning. 1 Peter chapter 4. Peter doesn't really delineate them here. He just breaks them down into the two sections I spoke of earlier, speaking gifts and doing gifts. 1 Peter 4, verse 10. As each one has received a gift, minister it to one another as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. If anyone speaks, let him speak as the oracle of God. If anyone ministers, let him do it with the ability which God supplies, that in all things God may be glorified through Jesus Christ, to whom belong the glory and the dominion forever and ever. Amen. Last week I shared with you that what God calls us to be and to do, he enables us to be and to do, and that's exactly what this section of scripture says. You are a steward of the manifold grace of God. It's variegated. God's grace comes to you in many different ways. And it's God who supplies the power and the energy and the gift. It's God and Christ in you. Some of us have gifts where we're speaking that could be praying or singing or prophesying or encouraging or counseling or writing, whatever it may be. It's word-oriented. Some of us minister, and the word for ministry here means to work in any capacity, from technical to uh, being a help, being a, doing some labor work, serving food. What's really interesting is in the book of Acts, when uh, the apostles are so busy, there's a problem in the church because the older women, the widows, uh, needed help. They needed food help. and other help. And so the apostles got together and said, let's get together men who are full of the Holy Spirit, who we can put over this business. So people who were, what it means full of the Holy Spirit, it means that, that they were just full of the fruit of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, walking according to the word, because everybody has the Spirit, but not everybody lives by it. But these people were full of the Holy Spirit and set over flipping burgers and bringing meals on wheels. Do you see that? It's people with the love of God and a desire to serve who are gifted in many different ways who build up the body of Christ. It's just 
a wonderful thing to understand. And these gifts help in so many, many ways. And again, Peter says, as each one has received a gift. Nobody, no one is without a gift. Let's look at another list. Romans 12. Romans 12, and we'll pick up in verse 3. For I say through the grace given to me, that grace was the gift of Paul being an apostle. To everyone who is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he, highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly, as God has dealt to each one a measure of faith. In other words, you're gifted because God in Christ decided this would be a beautiful gift in you to bless others. Verse 4. For as we have many members in one body, in our physical body, and all the members do not have the same function, so we, the church, being many, are one body in Christ and individually members of one another. Having then gifts differing according to the grace that is given to us, let us use them. If prophecy, let us prophesy in proportion to our faith. Or ministry, again, that word is a physical help in any capacity whatsoever. In ministering, he who teaches in teaching, he who exhorts in exhortation, he who gives with liberality, he who leads with diligence, he who shows mercy with cheerfulness. So here the gifts are more specified, uh, but everybody has a gift or gifts and sometimes those gifts change depending on what the need is because Christ is the head of the church. He knows that this local body of believers needs this or the church at large needs something else and he will work in people. But it's up to us every day, as I said from Peter, to be in the word, to learn the word, to pray so that we're open and willing to the movement of the Lord Jesus Christ. At the end of the written teaching that will be up at the website later on tonight, there's a much larger uh, study on all of these gifts that's from my book on the gift of the Holy Spirit. That'll be up there if you want to look at it and work it and give it to other people. But let's go to 1 Corinthians 12. I want to show you something else here. There are also, I'm not going to go through them all here, but there are also nine manifestations speaking in tongues, interpretation of tongues, prophecy, word of knowledge, word of wisdom, discerning of spirits, faith, miracles, working of miracles, and gifts of healings. Every believer can manifest those, but some believers have a, a gift in one or more of those areas. They're more proficient. Uh, when, when they prophesy, boy, you've had it. You've heard the word of the Lord. When, 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 when they get wisdom, uh, they share it with other believers, and you know that wisdom was from God. But here's something interesting in 1 Corinthians 12 and verse 4. There are diversities of gifts, but the same spirit. There are differences of ministries, but the same Lord. And there are diversities of activities, but it is the same God who works all in all. Now, what this means is that there are diversities of gifts, many different gifts spread around the church. And it's the same Lord who gives them. Christ is the one who decides who in the body of Christ serves where. Then there, verse 5 says there are different ministries. A ministry is the sphere or the area in which you serve. I teach the church at large. Some people teach moms. Some people teach children. Some people teach a group of artists or a, a, a fellowship of business people. Your ministry is that arena in where you work. So there's a gift of teaching, but it may operate in a different capacity, in a different field. You understand what I'm saying? So then verse uh, six says, and there are diversities of activities, but it is the same God who works all in all. 
activities is a terrible word. It, well, activities is a good word in general, but not for here. It should be effects. So there are gifts, there are realms in which you work, and there are different effects that happen from all of this. Your gift may affect somebody in a way that somebody else's gift doesn't. That doesn't mean that one person's is different is better than another. It just means that God wants something different from you than he does from somebody else. Do you understand that? So there's no place for haughtiness. There's no place for arrogance or pride. And there's no place for, oh, woe is me, self-deprecation, because I don't have the gift you have. Get busy serving in love and let God lead you where he wants to lead you. Rewards are given not for the gift you're given. Rewards are given in eternity for how you shared your gift. Kabish, do you understand? Kabish. Boy, there's a Dago thing going through my head. But do you understand what I'm saying? Okay, let's go back to Ephesians chapter 4. And this is why we want to share our gifts. Ephesians 4, verse 11. And he himself gave some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, and some pastors and teachers for the equipping of the saints for the work of ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, till we all come to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, to a perfect man, to, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. Wowzers. When will everybody in the church be fully mature like Jesus Christ? At the gathering, when Christ returns. So how long are gifts given to the church? Till Christ returns. That's right. The gifts have not ceased, nor will they cease, until the Lord Jesus Christ returns. And then who knows what abilities he will give his people after that, because scripture says we will reign as kings and priests in the coming kingdom of God. There will still be work to do, and Christ will equip us to do that. Now, verse 14, here's the purpose of growing up and maturing, that we should no longer be children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the trickery of men in the cunning craftiness of deceitful plotting. <laughs> Evil people, snooker dooker. Sometimes we think that errors in the church happen innocently. They don't. Errors in the church happen <coughs> by people who trick us and want to deceive us and plot against the growth of the truth. Let me show you this. Let's go to um, Acts chapter 20. Acts chapter 20. This is the last time that the Apostle Paul saw the elders at Ephesus before he was arrested and sent to Rome. And I want to read to you what he says here because it's appropriate for us today as well as then. Acts 20, we're going to start in verse 25. Paul says, and, and indeed, now I know that you all, among whom I have gone preaching the kingdom of God, will not see my face, will see my face no more. Therefore, I testify to you this day that I am innocent of the blood of all men, for I have not shunned to declare to you the whole counsel of God. That phrase, free from the blood of all men, goes all the way back to, I think it's Jeremiah, where God tells him to be a watchman. And when the watchman declares danger is coming and people are warned, the blood is no longer on the watchman's head. But if danger comes and the watchman never declares what's coming and people are hurt, then the blood is on the watchman's head. And so leaders are responsible to teach the word of God, to warn, exhort, to comfort, so that people are taught and warned and exhorted and then if they disobey, then the blood's on their own head, but it, it, it's not on the leader's head. So Paul says, I've, I've, I've declared to you the whole counsel of God. Uh, verse 28. 
Therefore, take heed to yourselves and to all the flock among which the Holy Spirit has made you overseers to shepherd the church of God, which he purchased with his own blood or the blood of his own, Jesus Christ. For I know that, for I know this, that after my departure, savage wolves will come in among you, not sparing the flock. Also from among yourselves, men will arise up, speaking perverse things to draw away the disciples after themselves. Therefore watch and remember that for three years I did not cease to warn everyone night and day with tears. So errors will creep into the church. People always want to either be the big shot and draw disciples away from other people, or they want to purposely bring in error, be watchful, teach the word of God, help people to serve in their ministry so that the body of Christ flourishes. Back to Ephesians 4. So let's not get blown ab about. Let's not get tossed to and fro. Let's teach the Bible accurately with love. And then verse 15. But speaking the truth in love, we may grow up in all things into him who is the head Christ, from whom the whole body joined and knit together by what every joint supplies, according to the effect of working, by which every part does its share, causes growth of the body for the edifying of itself in love. So speaking the truth in love is a really weird Greek word, comes from a really weird Greek word that literally means truthing it in love. What does that mean? It's kind of a weird phrase. It means what I said earlier in the beginning, everybody's gifts are either in word or deed, and even if your gift is a word or a deed gift, make it a reality in all that you do and in all that you say. Make godliness and love and joy and faith and hope the basis of all your thoughts and all your actions. And then the church will grow by what everybody supplies and we will be knit together in love. It, that's just a fantastic, fantastic picture of the church a beautiful framework of how the church should work and flourish. And it's important that we do this because the next section of Scripture is all about how we relate to the world. And the world's a crazy place, if you didn't know it already. And so we need to take care of one another. So, Father, thank you for your word to us this day. We're grateful for your love to us, for your concern that you've given us a written record of your will and your heart so that we can learn it and obey it and rejoice over it. Thank you for every believer in the church working to make known your love and your goodness. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen.